three or four weeks, I think, of my life, and I, I think uh, for all of us. Um, and, and that really was uh, symbolic of the session as a whole. It's, it's, we almost forget um, that we began session in the wake of Hurricane Irma and the tragedy at the Hollywood Hills Rehabilitation Center. Um, we began session with two members uh, resigning and um, some uh, significant uh, issues uh, with regard to workforce uh, sexual harassment. And then mid-session, of course, we had the shooting at Stone and Douglas, which really uh, impacted all of us, not only emotionally, um, but, but budgetarily um, divided the people, created a lot of discussion and controversy and policy. Um, and that really sucked uh, some of the air out of, the, out of our session. I had um, some stats here I wanted to share. Um, in uh, 2018, we had 3,250 bills filed, 2,700 amendments filed, 527 committee meetings, 2,853 bills were seen in committee. We had 40 floor sessions, and with all of that, we passed a grand total of 200 bills. Um, so it, it was, uh, it, you know, we thought it was under 200, I went that number, um, but it, it still, as Ashley said, um, significantly below uh, what we normally do. And, um, you know, I think, hopeful that, uh, of course, you know, when, when tragedies like this happen, they, they do take up a lot of attention and, and a lot of our committee time and whatnot. Um, but um, you also have the factor that it was an election year. And so a lot of folks didn't want to deal with any uh, things that were controversial. Um, I think uh, we're all hopeful that uh, this next year will be more productive uh, for our communities. So many great things happening here in downtown Lauderdale. Um, and I want to thank you all. It's an exciting time. Dan really touched on it. The, the construction, the unemployment, fantastic. Uh, just last week, Broward Workshop had a, had a great presentation uh, on statistically how South Florida is looking compared to the rest of our state. And we've got a lot to be proud of here. There's some other things we have to work on. Um, affordable housing being, I think, one of the primary <coughs> issues that I know we've all worked on. And i um, happy to talk about that more as we go on. But I'm going to go ahead and pass the mic here. Thank you, uh, Senator Farmer. You know, I, I too want to thank you all for having us here today. It's a pleasure to be here. And certainly a pleasure to be home. Uh, I'm Perry Thurston, State Senator for District 33. I, uh, served in the house for eight years with uh, my good friend, George. I always welcome these Broward County events so I can have George here and he can be in the minority. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we in Tallahassee. Uh, I always joke that I have to give George my bills to get across the final line, but when we're in Broward County, it's a different story. We want to treat it nice. Uh, <laughs> serving in the uh, house for eight years my first session along with uh, Senator Farmer in the Senate, it's, um, it's clear to me that there's always, uh, each session is different. And as Senator Farmer said, we came in expecting uh, certain issues to be on the uh, forefront of the agenda. And uh, after uh, February 14th, of course, everything changed. We did, uh, however, manage to uh, do some damage, and we did some uh, moderately good things as well, which we'll get into. Uh, uh, you know, there's always opportunities in Tallahassee, and your priorities, uh, you know, uh, reflected in, in the things that you actually get done. So, from Broward County, we have uh, distinct needs, and when we're in Tallahassee, that's what we're there for, the fight for the needs that we have and the interests that we think are important to the state. We are doing that, we'll continue to do that, but these opportunities like this is an opportunity for us to give you a reflection on what we think happened, how we think we can do it better, and what we have to look forward to. And uh, for that, uh, thank you for uh, inviting us out. Uh, good morning. Again, I'm Representative Bobby DeBose, and uh, in the House, I, I concur with uh, Senator uh, Farmer in regards to it being very emotional, um, mentally, physically. This was by far the uh, hardest session that I had to deal with in a lot of different ways. Um, just another experience we had in the House, we lost one of our colleagues, um, 
And so that was also very uh, emotional for us. Um, the um, point that I will make in regards to uh, this particular session, um, as, as much as we didn't pass a lot of bills, um, I think we laid a lot of groundwork. And in this process, it takes several sessions to get things done. Um, as, as Jenny is aware, we've been working on the bill and, uh, with the DBA and it's a local bill, and uh, we've all had our hands. <laughs> we've all had our hands in. But um, I, I think we'll continue to press forward with that. Um, and uh, I'll just comment uh, on George, and um, I'm really going to miss this guy. Uh, we work uh, well together, and it's a great bipartisan effort that since I've been in this process, we've been able to bring things home to uh, not only Fort Lauderdale, but Brown County. And in fact, uh, prior to um, being a state rep, when I was a commissioner, I would go up and uh, George would be one of the first people I would find. And whether we agreed on the issue or not, we would tussle over, but at the end of the day, we did what was best for uh, Broward County. And uh, he's leaving, so I'll just formally say that uh, I'll miss his efforts and our partnership. He served us well, although he's on the other side of the aisle. <laughs> but he always does what's right uh, for, for uh, Brown County. Um, this year, um, I, I think probably uh, the biggest piece of uh, uh, legislation that I worked on was uh, 726. Um, I'll be completely honest, I uh, went up with my own bills and actually was able to get a bill across the finish line uh, Broward County, um, in, in uh, reference to the uh, bar, it was a public records exemption to protect those individuals because of an incident that happened here. Um, but that particular bill probably will be the most memorable bill for me. Uh, probably worked the hardest on it. Spent more time in the Senate with these guys trying to work with leadership on both sides to do what was fair and equitable. Not only for Parkland and, and, and Broward, but for the entire state. Um, but um, as we move on, we'll have further discussion. So, uh, this is what it is. I want to give George some time. Thank you. Thank you. Well, first of all, thank you all for the very nice comments. And it's um, very mutual. And I'm definitely going to miss the friendship. And, and again, I know a lot of times things seem very partisan because you read the news and you see one. But the truth is, I mean, we're all representing Broward County, and we all do share that in common. And we're actually all very good friends with each other. And so, you know, although there's some high profile um, debates, in the end, we are all trying to help our county. And each of these gentlemen do the same thing, and we miss each one of you as well. Um, the, the, the session was very difficult. Just before I get into that, um, first of all, I'll say thank you for those of you that did come to Tallahassee. Although it's very difficult to get up there, um, you know, Jenny, Dan, and many of others that came up, Ashley. It's, um, it's, it's very important for the legislators to see you and hear what you have to say, and, and particularly uh, in your advocacy. And um, I think sometimes the face-to-face the -face meeting has been diminished, uh, although that's why we're all here. We know that being together, meeting is important. And it's the same thing in Tallahassee. A lot of times budget items can sometimes get in because people have taken their time to come up the last week or two and forcefully advocate for a position. So please don't ever minimize the importance of that. I know Lauren's been good getting up as well. And uh, Dan's done a great job uh, spearheading the Chamber's efforts in, in Tallahassee. So thank you for that. Uh, again, I, I don't want to kind of repeat what's been said. Uh, rightfully so, the Parkland tragedy took up a lot of the energy of the session. I was very proud to say we passed a school safety bill against some long odds. Uh, it, did, it does provide for some gun control safety measures, uh, the three-day waiting period, the 21 years of age, uh, protective orders to remove uh, guns from people who are a threat to others because of their mental disabilities. Um, it obviously had hundreds of millions of dollars for school safety and school hardening. And I think we'll talk about that as we get into it. But then these, these were significant strides, and then a lot of money, um, over almost $70 million, actually over that in mental health funding. Uh, the state was not doing a great job, frankly, in terms of mental health funding. Uh, it's sad that it took a tragedy to <coughs> spur us into this, but we did. I'm very proud uh, to say that we did spend a lot of money this year recurring. It's going forward, we'll be doing it. Uh, similar to kind of what we had done with the Everglades and some of the other big programs. So this will dramatically increase the resources for mental health funding. It's, it's a public crisis. 
Um, the other bill I want to touch on briefly is, uh, is the opioid bill. Uh, coming into session, that was a, a high priority. Um, it didn't change in terms of priorities, it just it, it did get passed. Um, and the primary things are, one, uh, just to keep in mind, 85% of the people who become addicted to these opioids usually do so because of a prescription that they, they receive because of you know, some kind of pain management, um, or they steal it from their parents and have it. So there's, there's too many of these pills floating around. Um, and, and what we're finding, what we found, is that the, the, bill, the pills were open prescribed. So you would get, and I probably have friends like this too, I, I certainly do, where you have an outpatient surgery, it may take you a couple days to recover from it, you get you know, a, a 20 day supply of pills. So that's how it gets, ends up getting into the black market, people get addicted. So we limit it to three days, supplies in most cases there are exceptions, obviously for chronically you know, cancer patients, things like that, but for the normal routine, Surgery is going to be a three-day supply unless the doctor can justify it at the time. Um, and then the mandatory use of the prescription data uh, monitoring program, that's to catch addicts. Everybody that gets an opioid prescription has to be put into that. So this will find those people who are pill shopping. We were finding that a lot of the uh, pharmacists and physicians weren't using this, even though it was mandatory. And now it will be mandatory, I should say. It was voluntary before, now it's mandatory. So I thought those were some of the big achievements of the session. to try to get through as many issues as possible. I prepared some questions. I'm going to ask each, um, each member of the legislature a question um, and have that member um, answer on that particular issue. Um, and then we'll open it up to the audience. Um, but in the past, we've kind of asked each member the same question, and then you're only going to hear about a few different issues. Obviously, if, if there's any topic that's discussed that others want to weigh in on, please, please do. Um, this is done this way in effort to try to touch on as many issues as we can, um, not to exclude any kind of discussion or key thoughts that folks might have. Um, Senator Farmer, I'd like to start with you. Um, you know, we Representative Moritis mentioned the, the, the school safety or gun reform bill, depending on how you want to characterize it. It obviously was a very emotional session for everyone, and. Um, even getting something passed through the legislature is uh, a, a huge achievement, and the, the bipartisan nature of that bill um, was, was, was historic. Um, he mentioned, Representative Moritis mentioned a few elements in the bill. Are there other elements in the bill that you would like to highlight, and um, what, how, how do you, you know, what are your thoughts on the way that that bill, um, the elements that were passed in that bill that will help, you know, prevent these tragedies from affecting not only our community here in Broward County, but other communities um, across across the country. Sure, yeah, and um, that bill, and, and uh, Rep. DeVos hit on it as well, the uh, most controversial bill we saw all session long by far. Um, yes, there are some good things in it. Um, some things that frankly I think most of this room would agree on, no polling shows, are really kind of no-brainers. Um, raising the age to 21, having a cooling off period or waiting period, and uh, one is seeking to buy firearms. And even the, um, the red flag provision, um, like on point where I live, uh, the first city last week to implement that provision um, was a resident who was making threats against his neighbors, um, had a number of firearms, 300 rounds of ammunition, just sitting on his couch, uh, told the authorities that uh, you know, uh, his neighbor was a shapeshifter, and uh, uh, with some sort of alien presence and had the electricity turned off in his entire building because he was flowing through his legs and controlling his body. And so those are types of people that obviously need help and he, he was uh, institutionalized and he's getting help, but more importantly, the, the neighborhood uh, was feeling threatened. He was threatening people. And so the law was implemented uh, for its intended purpose. Um, There'll be further hearings on that, but you know those are some of the good things we've passed, and it's been you know 20 plus years since any kind of gun safety legislation has been passed in, in Florida. Um, the NRA is a very very powerful institution, and for many of us though the frustration was uh, in the fact that we felt like we we could have done more. Um, again, uh, issues like uh, background check loopholes. Um, 
We just had a, a, we were supposed to have a gun show here in Fort Lauderdale last weekend. Uh, I want to commend uh, Marilyn Trentalis and the entire commission for uh, mayor. Uh, mayor. Oh, it's done now, yeah. Uh, mayor mayor Trentalis. I was being so careful that I got corrected so many times when I was calling mayor last week. Uh, uh, but they stepped up, and I know Mayor Fisher has done the same in Pompano. And it's always trying to curb, you know, capitalism or stop. It. But, you know, you when you sell a car, you have to register it. You go through a title agency. And uh, what happens at these gun shows is people are buying guns in the parking lot. It happened last week, even though the show was canceled. And we had a forum on gun and school safety. There was stuff still happening in the parking lot. Um, we would have liked to have seen um, maybe limitations on assault weapons or uh, high-capacity magazines. And we heard that across the board from the students and the parents who came up and talked to us. The other thing we heard uh, almost unanimously was great concern about arming teachers. Um, we all want school safety. And the school safety, you know, hardening our schools, having greater security, again, no brainer. Mental health treatment, it's, uh, Rep. Moran's hit on it, it's, it's sad that it took something like this to finally fund mental health in a meaningful way. We had, we were able to get funding last year for Broward County for suicide prevention. We had 11 suicides in our schools last year. Uh, that's that's a staggering number. Um, and so, um, and then we look at the funding for all these things and how it was implemented. It's actually taking away money now from the education budget for Broward County. Broward County is at a net loss because of the way these dollars are allocated. <coughs> And so that was, as, as you know, things were, were happening in Tallahassee and parents were coming up and students were coming up and the buses and the rallies that we had, it was great shining a light on this issue. But, you know, the parents, many of them came away from the process a little bit disillusioned. Um, they were, frankly, in many instances, sort of, you know, used and maybe manipulated. Uh, they were fearful that if once this proposal came out and, I guess you could say it's a bipartisan proposal, but the proposal was made and the bill was filed with maybe three Democrats having any kind of say in it. Um, so it was not really a bipartisan product. And then the whole message was, well, if you don't support this, we're gonna get nothing. And I don't think that was accurate. I don't think that that would have been the case. And so uh, we struggled uh, with the issue, and at the end of the day, um, you know, it came down to you know, putting more guns in schools was something that I, I, I couldn't support. Um, I know uh, Senator Thurston um, uh, agreed with that. And I think, you know, the, the, the hope we have is that that issue does not fade. You know, we have kept hearing through session, let's do this, baby steps, this is the first step. For a lot of us, the concern is that a year from now, when the rallies are done, and the buses aren't coming to Tallahassee, and the pressure is off, that there will be no next step. That would have been the last step that we took on, on gun safety and school safety. And so, and you know, you can harden the school, and then what about the park? What about the beach? What about the movie theater? What about the mall? You know, we've got to deal with the root common denominator, and that's the instrument used to kill people. And so, hopefully, that we'll do more going forward. But um, it was uh, extremely intellectually, morally, emotionally challenging. Uh, time and we did the best we could, and we all uh, we all brought to the debate different thoughts, and, and at the end of the day, it was a very close vote, um, and we're happy we got some stuff done, but not nearly enough. Uh, let me just comment on that because I, I know with interest that you termed it a bipartisan effort, and uh, like Senator Farmer has said, uh, I think that it was anything except a bipartisan effort. As the chairman of the Legislative Black Caucus, representing uh, seven senators and 21 House members, we took the caucus position against the bill. We uh, did not vote for it. And when you think about a bipartisan effort, what, what I would ask you to do is to look at what constitutes that bipartisan effort. Generally, you're talking about one or two senators uh, Unfortunately, uh, some of them may be in our district, but uh, one or two senators who are giving that label to legislation. When um, 
my good friend, uh, Representative Morales, and uh, we agree with a lot of stuff, but he sort of minimized the state's position on mental health. You know, Florida ranks 48 and 49 when it comes to mental health across this country. So when Senator Farmer talks about we tried to get uh, suicide prevention last year, well, I've been in the legislature now for 10 years. These efforts to get the state to step up to the plate for mental health is an ongoing process. We've been pushing this for 10, at least 10 years, and I'm sure longer than that. As a criminal defense attorney, I will tell you that Florida provides mental health treatment in the Broward County Jail. That's where our citizens go to get the bulk of their mental health treatment. And anybody who's in the industry will tell you that. So when you're struggling with uh, Alabama at the bottom of the, the nation to provide mental health, then this is what we're leading to. So I just don't want us to leave here thinking that, well, look at what Florida did. We've had these legislation, and uh, Senator Farmer talks about getting a uh, hearing on the gun bill. Well, from the Democratic side, and I know we've got Democrats and Republicans here, we love you all. <laughs> but from the Democratic side, we've got common sense gun regulation that was passed this year, yes. But this, is, this didn't just come up on uh, February 14th. Last year, the year before, 10 years ago, we've been proposing this legislation that we've just passed throughout this time period. We haven't been in charge. We don't set the agenda. So yes, you know, to, to, to call it bipartisan, I would ask you to look at who gave those votes to this bill to make it, to give it that label. And then maybe question them about what their commitment is. Because our commitment is to the citizens of the state of Florida. And I told you earlier, we're here to fight for Broward County. So there are a lot of things in this bill that we don't think go far enough. You know, when Connecticut had a shooting in their uh, area, notwithstanding the NRA, they banned assault weapons. There's not one student that came to, to Tallahassee, and Senator Farmer was uh, largely instrumental in that effort. Not one student that didn't tell us that was their number one priority. We couldn't discuss it. Every amendment was voted down. That's the power of the NRA. At the time that this shooting happened, we were debating guns in churches, guns on universities, campuses, guns here. That's our debate. That's what was going on before. At the time of the shooting on February 14th, we were debating guns in churches. That's the culture. And that's what we're up against. And that's what we're dealing with. So none of these uh, 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 initiatives that were passed are new. Not one is a new bill. So we're glad to see it happen. Do we think it could have went far enough? By far. By far. The states that care about their citizens, they have banned these assault weapons. And I know some of you may be NRA members, and, and I understand that. But for the state to have 17 people shot and massacred, and then we leave with what we left with Tallahassee, if I'm a member of the NRA, Marin Hammer, I'm happy in a kid in a chocolate factory. If that's all I got, you couldn't discuss banning assault weapons. You've got guns in schools, which was an NRA priority for the last 10 years. You've got that now, and this is what we got out of this here. I think it's a win-win, and I think the lawsuit that the NRA has is a red hearing. I think it's represented. Yeah, um, I'll just, I just wanted to, I, I agree with what uh, the senators laid out there, but I just want to shift a little bit um, and focus a little bit more on something that Senator Farmer pointed out um, in regards to what we did uh, with this bill and education. Um, we were the uh, kind of the catalyst to get this thing moving and um, the unintended consequences, right? We move too fast, we try to slow it down, say, hey, let's take a more comprehensive look at this. And at the end of the day, Broward County, our school district, is impacted in an adverse way. So when I was at the state of the county, we talked about talent, we talked about importance, 
things that are bringing out to the chamber and what we should be looking at. And at the end of the day, our funding is, I think it was maybe a negative $16 per student. And so when you hear that funding was increased on an average, I think it was 100 and something per student, um, because of these things that we passed, our district is having a negative impact. So there are smaller districts um, that have seen an, uh, an increase of three falls, right? So they're getting maybe $300 per student, where now we're, we're looking at a negative impact which is gonna affect us across the board and really to this group. And that's why, you know, that's why I really want you to understand when you advocate, and I know a lot, a lot of you were at the state of the county, but this is going to have a huge impact. So as we sit here and say, you know, we get something's better than nothing, I think at the end of the day, we're really getting nothing, a negative nothing. So, you know, I just wanted to, to, to really point that out. I really want you to understand that because we need to reshape this narrative because it appears that all this great stuff and it's great for uh, Broward County and our school district, but at the end of the day, that's really not the narrative. I'd like to respond. Couple things. Uh, the bill was bipartisan. Obviously, you know the gentleman up here and myself voted for the bill. But Representative Moskowitz, Representative Jacobs, uh, Representative Berman, and many others, uh, particularly in the House and the Democratic Caucus, did support the bill. Um, that was kind of a somewhat of a split on the Democratic side. And uh, the NRA did not support the bill, contrary to what has been sort of said. Uh, the NRA strongly opposed the bill because of the, particularly because of its raising the age to 21 and the assault weapon purchases. So, uh, in fact, they filed a lawsuit subsequent to that. But they were putting a tremendous amount of pressure on. In fact, 20 Republicans in the House voted against the bill because of that. Um, so it was, I'm not going to say it was an 100% bipartisan sense that everybody voted for it in both chambers, but it was done for Representative Moskowitz in particular had a lot of input into the bill uh, because you know, his area was directly affected by the tragedy. Um, as far as the education funding, uh, yes, we did have another historic pre-K-12 education budget in the state's history. Um, because of these categorical funding models, for some reason we in Broward kind of end up staying neutral. We're looking into that. That was one of the things we looked at. But I will say this, and when I kind of look at our appropriations chairs and try to get in their face a little bit about, you know, we don't have to give as much money, he looks at me and says, your school board wants $25 billion for a building out in Parkland to rebuild what happened, and another $7 million for portables. And so, you know, we are getting a lot of money, you know, in some ways more than the fair share, but we decided as a county that we wanted to go to rebuild this building. And I, I'm not going to disagree with the sentiment behind that, but when you start talking about those kinds of dollars, that does have a real impact on, on what we're going to get. So I just would make that comment. Thank you, Representative Inhofe. Um,